Scientists are always trying to play God, and one such way they're doing this is by attempting to resurrect extinct species, Jurassic Park style. These are 20 dead animals scientists are close to reviving. Number 20. Caspian Tigers Most of our tiger populations are pretty low. I mean, there's only an estimated 3,900 tigers left in the wild. But scientists are trying to change that by bringing one back from extinction, the Caspian Tiger. Caspian tigers were once one of the world's largest tigers and roamed the lands of Central Asia from the Caspian Sea to northwest China. However, their numbers started dwindling before they died out altogether due to habitat loss that resulted in them not being able to access the prey they needed to survive and thrive. It's believed that Caspian tigers died out in the 1950s, but some reports say it was more like the 1970s. Regardless of when it was, we know that we messed up by allowing them to go extinct. Although, we might be making up for it now. Scientists have discovered that the Amur tiger has an almost identical genetic structure to Caspian tigers. So they want to start bringing them back from extinction by using Amur tigers from the Russian Far East and developing Caspian tigers for placement in Central Asia. They have identified two potential desirable places in Kazakhstan to introduce the Caspian tigers, but it might take at least 15 years to bring up the hooved animal population in this area to give them a fighting chance of holding their own. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the odd topic. In this video, we'll be talking about dead animals scientists are close to reviving, but for a moment, let's talk about a nearly dead animal that scientists are close to saving. This is the white rhinoceros. They're a seriously endangered species. There's actually only two females left, so scientists have had to get involved and are attempting to clone the females. If successful, they might just save this gorgeous animal. Let's hope they do. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag oddtopic. Number 19. Carolina Parakeets Carolina parakeets used to live in abundance on the east coast of the United States. These beautifully vibrant birds with yellow heads and red faces made their homes in swamps and old-growth forests, and they lived there quite comfortably for thousands of years, feasting on toxic cockleburs that didn't harm them. But then we kind of killed all of them. Once European settlers arrived, we absolutely decimated their numbers with deforestation, trapping, hunting, and the introduction of the European honeybee. By the early 1900s, they were all but gone, with just one remaining in a Cincinnati zoo until it died in 1918. But we can fix this issue if we try hard enough. Scientists have worked out that the sun parakeet in South America is the Carolina parakeet's closest living relative, and there's very little genetic difference between the two. If scientists can edit the many hundreds of protein team codes in the sun parakeet's DNA, they can bring Carolina parakeets back from the dead. Scientists are now looking at mapping Carolina parakeet DNA to understand its diet and potentially reintroduce them. Even if they fail, the information they learn might help the sun parakeet from meeting the same fate in the future. Number 18. Elephant Shrews Scientists might have considered reviving the Somali Sengi elephant shrew at one time or another. This tiny mammal, which is related to the elephant, has been lost to science for at least half a century, with only a few dozen of them preserved in museums worldwide. It even appears on the official Global Wildlife Conservation Lost Species list. But as it turns out, the Somali Sengi Elephant Shrew has just been playing the longest game of hide-and-seek. They're still around, and we don't need to revive them. In fact, it looks as though they're doing just fine without us. Researchers were working in the Horn of Africa when they managed to capture eight live elephant shrews. The small, mouse-like creatures caused a great deal of excitement for researchers, but some people weren't actually all that surprised by the discovery. According to Hussein Rayela from the association Djibouti Nature, they never considered the Sengis to be lost, but we're pleased that the new research brought them back into the spotlight, and upon further investigation, it's been found that they might not even be at risk of extinction. It's been suggested that their status should change to least concern. Number 17. Heath Hens 
Heath hens were small wildfowl related to the prairie chicken. They were apparently quite tasty and also easy to kill, which ended up being a recipe for disaster since they're now extinct. Before the American Revolution, heath hens were found in abundance from Maine to Virginia, but that quickly changed. As human populations expanded, they experienced a great deal of hunting pressure. The Revolutionary War had noticeably lowered their numbers. Naturalist John Audubon became quite concerned about the plummeting populations in 1830, but nothing was done. Within 40 years, the only heath hens known to exist were on a small island off Cape Cod in Massachusetts called Martha's Vineyard. A 1,600-acre sanctuary was set up to protect the 50 hens left by 1907, and they successfully increased numbers to around 2,000 by 1915. However, numbers fell to about 50 after a fire wiped out their habitat in 1916. And then there was simply no coming back from it. A harsh winter, predatory birds, and poultry disease resulted in the eventual demise of the entire species. The final male died in 1932. But their story might not end there. Scientists have been considering heath hen de-extinction in three stages – genome research, revival, and restoration. We also have a close relative to work with – the North American prairie chicken, which means there's hope for them yet. Number 16. Ivory-billed Woodpeckers For many years, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service listed ivory-billed woodpeckers as critically endangered. We had messed with their habitat and overhunted them, causing their numbers to plummet. By 2021, they were declared extinct. And while there's a chance that scientists might like to revive them in the future, they might not actually have to do it. The U.S. government might have declared them extinct, but researchers claim that some are still living in the forests of Louisiana. The last accepted sighting was in 1944, but scientists looking for them in Louisiana woodlands for three years believe they captured footage of them and actually observed them in person. They used unmanned trail cameras and a drone to capture evidence of the bird that has turned out to be as elusive as Bigfoot. National Aviary Director of Conservation Steve Latta, who led the effort to find the ivory-billed woodpecker, says he even saw one for himself. He saw the bird fly upward in front of him and noticed the white edges on its wings. The features he identified couldn't have meant it was any other woodpecker species. Auburn University biologist Jeffrey Hill says people can't believe a bird can defy documentation and be alive when we've confirmed it's extinct. We're fascinated by them, but according to Jeffrey, ivory-billed woodpeckers couldn't care less because they hate all people. Number 15. Moa Moa are a now-extinct flightless bird endemic to New Zealand. There were nine species in total, and the two largest could grow up to 12 feet tall and weigh up to 510 pounds. Before Polynesians settled in New Zealand, there were believed to be between 58,000 and 2.5 million Moa roaming around, living their best lives. But then, humans did what humans do best. We cleared the forests, which reduced their habitat, and then we hunted them to extinction. They were declared extinct by 1445, followed by the Hust's eagle, which relied on them for food. But that doesn't mean they are gone for good. There are unlikely to be any moa roaming around that we don't know about, especially since they would stand out at 12 feet tall, but they are a candidate for cloning. They've only been extinct for a few hundred years, and we have plenty of MOA remains, which makes DNA extraction a possibility. There's also been a great deal of interest in reviving this extinct species, and more people got on board when New Zealand Member of Parliament Trevor Mallard said bringing back some of the smaller species within 50 years was viable. Natural history experts agreed. Number 14. Beji Freshwater Dolphins the IUCN describes Beji freshwater dolphins as critically endangered and possibly extinct. Despite several surveys being carried out, we haven't had any confirmed sightings of this dolphin species in almost two decades. Sadly, we're to blame for that. The Beji freshwater dolphin is believed to be the first dolphin species we've driven to extinction due to the industrialization and heavy use of rivers for hydroelectricity, fishing, and transportation. In 2001, the Chinese government approved a conservation action plan to conserve the species, but to conserve a species, you first have to find it. A late 2006 expedition failed to turn up a single dolphin, and organizers said they were functionally extinct. Although, I guess there's some promise in a few sites over the years. Someone videotaped a large white animal swimming in the Yangtze River in 2007, which has been tentatively confirmed as a Beji. News sources also reported a potential sighting in 2016 and another in 2018. But if these sightings are found to be wrong, can scientists revive the Beji freshwater dolphin? Well, potentially. 
The extinction used to be a myth, but our ability to manipulate stem cells, recover ancient DNA, and reconstruct lost genomes makes it possible. Number 13. Caribbean Monk Seals Caribbean monk seals, also known as sea wolves and West Indian seals, were Caribbean seals that haven't been seen for over 70 years. They are believed to be extinct. And guess who's to blame? Yeah, take a wild guess, us. We overhunted these seals for oil, and we also overfished their food supply. Sharks might have also played a part in reducing their numbers, but not as much as us. The last time we saw these seals was in 1952, when one was spotted between Jamaica and Nicaragua at Serenia Bank. But they weren't officially declared extinct until 2008 after a five-year search for them. Caribbean monk seals were large, long seals that could grow up to 8 feet long and weigh up to 600 pounds. They had distinctive round faces, wide-spaced eyes, and large whisker pads with smooth, light-colored whiskers. The very first mention of them was on Christopher Columbus's second voyage in 1494 when a ship laid anchor south of Hispaniola and men aboard the vessel killed eight seals resting on the beach. The second mention was when Juan Ponce de Leon discovered the Dry Tortugas Islands. His men killed over a dozen of them. And that was just the beginning. There's also evidence to suggest that in 1588, sugar plantation owners arranged for hunting parties to kill hundreds of them each night to use their oil to lubricate their plantation machinery. The least we could do to make up for that is to bring them back from the dead. Number 12. Pygmy Tarsier we might have considered reviving the pygmy tarsier, but it looks like now we don't have to. These small, 2-ounce, 4-inch nocturnal primates from Sulawesi in Indonesia were thought to be extinct by the early 20th century. Fortunately, our assumptions were proven wrong when Indonesian scientists accidentally killed one while trapping rats in 2000. It would be a bit awkward if that one were the last living pygmy tarsier, don't you think? But fortunately, it wasn't. In 2008, a research team from Texas A&M University found the very first pygmy tarsiers to be seen alive since the 1920s. They captured two males and a female in a net, and a fourth pygmy tarsier escaped. Radio collars were put around their necks so their movements could be tracked. Hopefully, that'll allow us to build on what we already know about them. So far, we know they're smaller than other tarsier species and have tan fur with gray or brown-red coloring. They have large eyes, nails on all their hand digits, and just two on each foot. It's believed that pygmy tarsiers remain in bonded pairs for up to 15 months and have two breeding seasons, one at either end of the rainy season. They are insectivorous and eat arthropods, and they're believed to communicate at ultrasonic frequencies beyond what the human ear can detect. Number 11. Stellar's Sea Cows Stellar sea cows were aquatic herbivorous mammals found around the Commander Islands between Alaska and Russia in the Bering Sea. During the Pleistocene Epoch, their range expanded across the North Pacific. We don't know for sure, but it's possible that indigenous populations had interactions with stellar sea cows before Europeans arrived, and a combination of Paleolithic human hunting and climate change might have reduced their numbers. Less than three decades after Europeans discovered stellar sea cows, they had hunted them to extinction for their fat, meat, and hide. They didn't stand a chance because they were such slow-moving and easy-to-catch mammals. If they were here today, they'd be identifiable by their 11-ton weights, 30 feet lengths, thick layers of blubber, and forked tails. They also had white bristles and keratinous plates to eat a diet of kelp. Their official extinction date was 1768, but there have been sightings since then. The official journal of the Academy of Sciences of the USSR published an article about a possible sighting in 1963, and a whaling ship also encountered large marine mammals feasting on seaweed in the Gulf of Anadir. While there might have been murmurs in the scientific community about bringing stellar sea cows back, it might not be possible. There are no living surrogates to accommodate a cloned fetus, so technology might need to advance a bit more before it's even a consideration. Number 10. Coelacanth Fish Coelacanths, mainly found near the Comoro Islands off Africa's east coast, are a rare order of fish. There are at least two extant species, and they follow the oldest known lineage of lobe-finned fish and tetrapods. The oldest known fossils of this fish are over 410 million years old, and they were believed to be extinct around 66 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. However, as the ocean is so vast, we just couldn't find them. They were there all along, and some were even found off the coast of South Africa in 1930. 38. 
museum curator Marjorie Courtenay Latimer was the first one to spot the fish in amongst a local fisherman's catch. She contacted an ichthyologist from Rhodes University, sent him drawings of the fish, and he confirmed that it was what she thought it was. The fact that it was found 66 million years after it was supposed to be extinct makes it the most well-known example of a Lazarus taxon, which is an evolutionary line that disappeared from fossil records only to show up later. Since the 1930s, coelacanth fish have now been seen in Tanzania, Madagascar, Comoros, Kenya, and surrounding places. Between 1938 and 1975 alone, over 80 specimens were found. Well, I guess we can cross them off our bring them back from the dead list. Number 9. Dusky Seaside Sparrows Dusky seaside sparrows were a subspecies of the seaside sparrow found along the St. John's River and in the natural salt marshes of Merritt Island, Florida. They were non-migratory birds and were identifiable by their dark coloring and distinct song. They were a true delight, and it feels like we had such a short time with them. They were only discovered in 1872 and were declared extinct by 1990. The last known individual died in 1987 at Walt Disney World's Discovery Island. Many things contributed to their extinction, but pretty much it was us. We're the drama. Firstly, their nesting grounds were devastated when Merritt Island was flooded to reduce the mosquito population around the Kennedy Space Center. We then drained the marshes around the river to build highways and grow our sugar and oil industries. Pollution and pesticides were the final nails in the coffin. By 1979, there were just six sparrows left, and all of them were male. We gave it our best shot of bringing them back by crossbreeding them with Scott's Seaside Sparrow, but after the final dusky Seaside Sparrow died, there didn't seem much point in trying to make hybrids reproduce to create dusky sparrows since they didn't have the proper DNA. Number 8. Labrador Ducks Labrador ducks were North American sea ducks with oblong heads, small eyes, and bills as long as their heads. They had short bodies, strong feet, and short, rounded tails. They were a unique and rare duck even as far back as the 1800s, so we should have known they didn't stand a chance. Labrador ducks became the first endemic North American bird to die out after the Columbian Exchange. The final sighting of one was in Elmira, New York in 1878, although you can still see at least 55 specimens of them in museum collections around the world. These ducks were rare even before European settlers arrived, and were actually not 100% sure why they died out. Apparently, they didn't even taste nice, so it's not like people were falling over themselves to kill one for dinner. There are many different theories as to why they might have died out. Some experts think their eggs were over-harvested, while others say the feather trade might have made them quite lucrative where the ducks lived. A decline in mussels and shellfish, which they lived on, might have also contributed, along with our influence on coastal ecosystems, causing the birds to try and find other habitats. Attacks. Number 7. Cuban Selenidin the Cuban selenidin might have been a mammal we brought back from extinction, especially since it's one of the very few mammals with toxic saliva that functions like venom. Just for curiosity's sake, it would be worth a crack. But we don't need to, because this creature we thought was already extinct was deemed to be alive and well. German naturalist Wilhelm Peters first discovered Cuban selenidins in 1861, and only three dozen of them had ever been found. By 1970, they were declared extinct since none of them had been seen since 1890. But they proved us wrong. Three were captured in 1974 and 1975, and surveys carried out since have shown that they still live in many places like Central and Western Oriente Province in Cuba. That doesn't mean they're not rare, though. Before 2003, the most recent sighting was 1999. And there's likely a reason why we just don't come across them often. These small, shrew-like creatures with dark brown to black hair are nocturnal burrowers. They live underground and don't venture out very much, except to look for insects and small animals on forest floors at night. Number 6. The Great Auk Great auks were penguin-sized flightless birds that used to breed on rocky and remote islands with convenient access to North Atlantic waters to forage. They could be found in many countries, like Spain, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Ireland, Norway, and Great Britain. But we took advantage of these tall, 33-inch, 11-pound birds. They were a food source and a symbolic item, with their bones being used for our burials and their skins being used to make cloaks. We even used them for fishing bait. There were concerns about their dwindling population as 
as far back as the 17th century, but early environmental laws were ineffective. By the mid-19th century, they were extinct. But possibly not forever. Almost 200 years later, scientists have grand plans to bring them back from the dead and reintroduce them to Farnay Islands off England's northeast coast. U.S.-based research institute Revive and Restore said it can recreate the species and restore its old breeding grounds. Scientists plan to take DNA from preserved organs or fossils and use digital data to sequence their genetic code. They can then edit the information into its nearest living relative, which is the razor bill. The final step is implanting fertilized embryos into a bird that'll be large enough to lay a great auk egg. A goose could be a good option. Number 5. Pava Ali Blanca the Pava Ali Blanca, or white-winged guan, is a bird endemic to northwestern Peru. We first knew about it in 1876, but we never had any confirmed sightings. After many research expeditions and no luck finding them again, the scientific community declared them extinct. But after nearly a hundred years, we learned that these birds weren't extinct. They were just really rare. A positive sighting of one was confirmed in 1977, and other individuals have been found since surveys started being carried out from 1980. But they're certainly not out of the woods. They might not be extinct, but there are only believed to be around 200 Pava Ali Blanca left. You might wonder why we find it so hard to spot these birds, since they can stand at 2.8 feet tall and weigh about 3.5 pounds. They also stand out with their black-brown plumage, green gloss, and a bright orange flap of skin called a dewlap under their lower jaw. But it's all to do with where they live. They can only be found in specific parts of northwestern Peru in small forested ravines and slopes around the Andes' west side. They tend to live at elevations of up to 3,600 feet. Number 4. Huya. Huya were beautiful black feathered birds known for their striking tail feathers consisting of a white band across the tips. Females also had long, thin, arching beaks, while the males had short, stout beaks. They were a unique species of wattle bird endemic to the North Island of New Zealand, and they were already a rare bird in the country before Europeans arrived. Even though they've now been extinct for a number of years, with the last confirmed sighting back in 1907, they still have a special place in Maori culture and traditions, and they're regarded as tapu by Maori. Maori, which means sacred. It's believed that habitat destruction, introduced rats, and hunting all contributed to their eventual demise, but there's every reason to believe that they could be coming back. The idea of cloning them was brought up in 1999, and a molecular biology professor, Diana Hill, who had already looked at bird cloning, said it would be flagship research. Nothing much happened at that point, but the idea was floated again in 2017. There are concerns about their lack of genetic diversity, which could see them become extinct again, but it's nice to know we have the option if we can get past those limitations. Number 3. Eastern Barred Bandicoots Australia has the world's worst mammal extinction rate, which isn't exactly an accolade you want to have. Although, they might have just taken the first step to fix that by successfully changing the status of the eastern barred bandicoot from extinct in the wild to endangered. Once upon a time, eastern barred bandicoots used to roam the Australian plains without a care in the world. Their numbers were stable, they had plenty to eat, and they were living life to the fullest. But then, we started destroying their habitats, and foxes started thinking they were pretty tasty. Before long, there were just 150 left. However, in the late 1980s, millions of dollars were invested into captive breeding programs to bring the bandicoots back from the brink. Predator-free sites protected by trained dogs were set up, and some of the bandicoots were moved to fox-free islands. It took three decades, but their numbers finally jumped from 150 to around 1,500. That meant they were able to change the conservation status in late 2021. The exceptional turnaround gives scientists reason to celebrate. Threatened species biologist Amy Coastsee said the change in status gave them hope that with their determination, government support, volunteers, and persistence, they could win the fight against extinction. Number 2. Xerxes Blue Butterfly do you remember that great song written by Canadian singer-songwriter Joni Mitchell, Big Yellow Taxi? One of the lyrics is, They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Ooh, up, 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 
and it actually rings quite true when you learn about the extinction of the Xerxes blue butterfly. This striking butterfly used to thrive in the sand dunes around the San Francisco Bay Area near what's now the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. As developers poured pavement and introduced new foliage, the butterflies simply vanished, never to be seen again. They were last spotted in the 1940s. There's always been a bit of debate about whether this butterfly was its own species or a subpopulation of a now extinct one, but some of the latest 20 2021 studies have unfortunately revealed that the former is true. It was its own species, and it is extinct. In fact, we now know that it's the first insect species extinction to be attributed to urban development. Number 1. Titana Boa uh, Look, I'm not saying that we shouldn't bring the Titana Boa back, but uh, well, no, okay, that's exactly what I'm saying. Scientists are saying it could come back, or at least something like it, but fortunately it won't be for millions of years if it happens at all. You'll be breathing a sigh of relief with me when you learn more about them. Titana boa are an extinct large snake species that used to grow up to 47 feet long and weigh as much as 2,500 pounds. They lived about 58 million years ago during the middle to late Paleocene epoch and became extinct after the dinosaurs. We always just assumed that they were an apex predator because they were absolutely massive, but they might not have been. Researchers found skull bones that revealed they were more likely to prey on fish. You're probably wondering why such a large nope rope wouldn't survive and thrive when it's basically the king of the jungle, but it just couldn't compete with climate change. It's believed that declining temperatures favored much smaller snakes, which meant that larger reptiles slowly started dying out and smaller ones took over their place in the ecosystem. Many of the animals that went extinct and continue to go extinct are our fault. We're in a pretty powerful position to use our sciencey skills and bring many of them back. If you could bring one animal back from extinction, which would it be? I'd go with my childhood dog, Babs. Coming for you, baby. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.